Hello everyone and welcome back to my Hard Time series in Kerbal Space Program 0 .90 Beta. In this episode, I'm intending to conduct the Planet Flag on Gilly mission because we have the right phase angle for it, but then I noticed that uh, we still had Planet Flag on Ike and I had totally forgotten about Elliot Kerman over here who was supposed to do that. This is our Ike station, uh, Shin Kyushu station I believe, and so we, well we need to do it and I know we haven't because He's still on the stack separator instead of docked up on the front side here. So I'm going to open the shield up front. I've got him totally refueled. So let's get him down and uh, get that flag planted on Ike so that we can get that uh, science and those funds. Okay, I think it should be alright. Okay. Uh oh. Okay, good. Whew. Worried I didn't have Elliot in there for a sec, but yes, actually the station is unmanned right now. So that's going to be a little bit tricky, but otherwise Elliot is ready to go. Alright, so let us orient retrograde, not prograde. Uh huh. Okay, well that's a little bit of a problem. The electric charge issue. But uh, I think it's good enough to land on Ike with. This engine doesn't recharge the batteries, so that's that's the problem. But I think we we'll, we can do it. So yeah, uh, we've already planted a flag on Ike, build it. Looks like what we should do is we should go around to Apoapsis and well, there are other biomes. So this is in a lighter patch. So maybe a darker patch like here would be a good place to do it. Let's see. Which way around are we going? Okay, uh, then here would be a good place to do it. So let me plot that out. Okay, so we'll go with that sort of trajectory. Judging from the parachutes, I think uh, Elliot was supposed to transfer back to Kerbin on this, but I might not have him do that. I might have him hang out on this station for a while. Ah, Duna Rise. I think this is probably good enough to actually land around here. Uh, past this ridge around here would be nice. If it isn't obvious already, Delta V is not a problem with this thing. Okay, here we go. The light's clearly showing that we're approaching the terrain, finally. Okay, touchdown. Now, the start going up there, not the smoothest sort of landing I've ever made. Well, we got a lot of parachutes on this thing. Maybe I also meant to have it be able to set down on Duna. That would make sense. Ladder's a bit short, though. And once I get him out, SAS will go off. Looks a little bit sturdy, but still somewhat worried. All right, well... Planning a flag means EVA, but let's uh, get some instrument readings. Let's see, seismic data. Um, I don't think we'll be able to transmit with this much electric charge. We'll have to wait till we get to the station, so let's keep the data. And we'll review it before departing. But I think for now we'll have to hang on to it. And so EV report from up here. Ike's Eastern Mountain Ridge. Well, that sounds hopeful. So let's keep that data board. Uh, let's do a crew report while we're here. Keep that data. And now EVA for the final bit of it. Okay. Here, you can just flop down. I think it's safe. All right. Now, take a surface sample. Apparently, Elliot can do that. Oh, okay, that's very important. EVA, large rocks scattered around the surface. Surface appears to react oddly to light. Okay, keep that data. Okay, and yep, just plant a flag now. Okay. 
Elliot uh, Eastern Ridge, I guess. Uh, Ike's Eastern Ridge. Almost forgot to do this. Yeah, yeah, I did. Okay, get back in there. All right, finally in there. All right, so all that stuff is done. Let's get him back to the station so we can get on with the ghillie side of things. Uh, SAS on and. Oh, well, let's pay attention to, well, should be alright just going east. Okay, let's go. Okay, so we're sort of going up in this sort of way, and we're actually going to try and catch up to him, uh, even though the station is behind us. It'll work out better that way anyway. Okay, one kilometer there. So we'll just wait for this burn. And that should do the trick. Looking all right here. Let's go to chase view. Okay, no, that's actually... Oh well, I guess I'll have to accept that. A little bit of a roll. Okay, here we go. Approaching pretty well. Didn't maneuver the station at all. Practicing basic docking skills here. Alright, docked. Despite a little bit of a momentary last minute flub there. But, yep, everything is good. Elliot is back. And let's now transmit that data. So, uh, we do have the electric charge. Well, we could recover it. I don't think we're in desperate need of the of the science, so maybe we'll recover it because this is clearly meant to transfer Elliot back home. So we'll just keep it on board and then we'll recover it with him. Alright, so that'll be the plan. Let us turn to the Gilly mission. Okay, so I've been on sort of a space plane kick recently and so the first idea I had, and I've got a lot of ideas for how to conduct the Gilly mission, the obvious thing would be the cheap the cheapy uh, using the lander can and all that, but I've had other ideas, and one was since uh, I just recently built the station chaser, I wanted a small little all-purpose one Kerbal craft, and this is this is the beast here. And I've called it the Hornet uh, because, well, little buzzing thing really, but uh, it's it's pretty finely tuned. The problem with it is it doesn't have much delta V. It's probably got like 800. Uh, so, rapier engine, 800 in vacuum, of course. Rapier engine, fuel tank here. This one has just liquid fuel, no o oxidizer, but I needed a small tank up front. Part of the problem is the big uh, mass of the inline clampatron, which is 0.3 tons. Then we have the air intake, which is actually pretty light. And uh, the most observant of you, I've probably already figured out exactly where the center of mass is. And uh, right there. And you can tell because that's where I've put my thrusters, among other things. And also, uh, if you take a look at the where the wings all are. So it's a curious little configuration. But it works because here's the center of lift. And it, as we run out of liquid fuel, if we were using jet mode, uh, we would have that. But we could run out of liquid fuel oxidizer. You'll notice the center of mass hardly moves. And that's, of course, because this hardly has any fuel. So that's the upside and downside. And uh, But otherwise, it's a cute little thing. And you can, you'll, you'll notice the lander legs on the tail because this can land vertically as well. And that is so that it could potentially conduct exploration missions of, uh, well, for instance, Gilly. 
uh, I sort of view it as sort of Jeb's own little pod. So maybe we'll have... I don't want to kill Jeb, though. Let's, uh, <laughs> even though it's Jeb's little pod, uh, let's have uh, Ribden Kerman, who hasn't gotten any experience yet, uh, or at least it looks like that. Ribden Kerman will uh, be our test pod for this little thing. So I'm actually doing this, even though we're supposed to be going on with the Gilly mission. Uh, what I've done is I've created a space version of this, but I'll have that in the VAB. Uh, the space version doesn't have the air intakes, it doesn't use the rapier, it uses the LV-909 with an extra tank in the back. And it's got some of the surfaces moved a bit, but because of the added fuel, it also has more movement in the center of mass. But we'll get to that. Uh, for now, let's uh, see if uh, see if this works with Rivden Kermit. Alright, so here we go. So this is a quarter of the cost of the... Of the what you call it, the Derrick, the DRK, and a half of the cost of the station chaser, but uh, it can't get into orbit. This is not a, uh, it's not a SSTL space plane. It'll have to be mounted on some sort of rocket to get into space, and its only benefit is that it can return back to land, sort of like the space shuttle. I mean, it can uh, re-enter and then uh, land back home. But uh, here we go. Let's see now, uh, intake mode. We have to avoid scraping the tail, obviously. Uh, come on, come on. Yeah, there we go. Wow, it's quick. Okay, gear up. Well, you don't have to go that fast. That should be fine. So it's a neat little rocket plane. Undoubtedly very maneuverable, considering it's got all moving surfaces in the back. In fact, most of its wing room, wing area is all moving, so it can probably do some crazy maneuvers. Uh, okay, well, let's not get too crazy just yet. It, I, I, I mean, it can fly inverted, I'm sure. There we go. It's flying inverted, stable. No big deal. Yep, so it could probably go quite a distance like this. Actually, not quite a distance because its fuel is running out rapidly. We could probably make it to the island runway, but uh, let's see now. Let's see if it can do some extreme maneuvers here. Ooh, no, it can't. Uh, I can feel it not wanting to do... Well, maybe you can flip. Come on, come on. You can do it. Uh, uh, uh. Not quite. <laughs> Not quite there. Oh well. But again, the problem with it is Delta V. Could probably make the return transfer from Duna or Eve, but uh, getting there is a trick. Right? I mean, if you guys waste fuel or spend fuel landing on Gilly, for instance, and then you have to transfer out, it gets complicated. Wow. Uh, you know what? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, hmm. This thing is a little bit more challenging to land than I thought. In terms of just being able to see where the heck I'm going. Huh. Let's go around. It's quite deceptive. It's sort of like a scooter of a aircraft. Ribden looks scared stiff, actually. Maybe we should try landing on its tail. It's sure got the thrust for it. But this is more challenging, of course. Landing on its tail would be relatively easy, I think. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hmm, well, I think we scraped the tail off. Let's 
so not the best possible system. Oh, you just a uh, just a rudder. Okay. Anyway, let's recover this. Okay, did he get some experience? Yes, he got one one point of experience. We got everything but that rudder back. All right. So that was the first plan. So the first plan was this Space Hornet. And now with the LV-909, it has more Delta-V. It's got an extra fuel container here. I think it's got like 1,500-ish, uh, somewhere around there. The This wing is moved up a bit, and you can see the, the center mass is sort of between the two sets of RCS ports there. Um, yeah. And it's got a parachute on the nose instead of a, a normal nose cone. So it is going to be able to it doesn't have any landing gear it just has these landing struts and so it'll just land parachute and maybe a little bit of thrust it probably won't need it much thrust the mass is 5.4 tons with all the fuel loaded so i think that parachute can handle it once it's empty and yeah but that was the idea the problem is getting a good launcher for it Basically, what happened was I went completely overboard, and uh, so I actually created a second stage here, which also returns back to Kerbin, but this second stage is supposed to transfer it over to EVE, get it into Gilly orbit, and then it, on its own, would return back to Kerbin at, for a safe landing at the KSC. So, controller, parachutes, and plenty of Delta V to spare. Uh, which is all well and good, but then once you've got this with a poodle engine here, then you have to develop a launcher for that. And of course I could use something like the Koyus or Taurus or something. The Taurus would be way overpowered, so would the Koyus actually. There's still only like 22 tons when you got the second stage and the uh, Hornet, the Space Hornet. And so I came up with this. I called it the Neutron because it vaguely, vaguely reminded me of the Russian Proton rocket. Uh, but it's got one of these... Uh, KS-25 X-4s, uh, the really, uh, I think it's the most powerful rocket in the game, right? This one. And so it's got one of those at the base. I initially put this one, of course, but it ended up being too heavy. It's 290 tons. But, uh, yeah, so we've got that uh, vast array of parachutes to handle it, uh, the core on the side, the reaction wheel there. And, yeah, this would have enough Delta V to go. The question is... Do we really need all this for Gilly? I mean, it's like, this is this is going a little bit too far to land a mission on Gilly, isn't it? Uh, 177,000 funds for a Gilly mission. Sounds a little bit ridiculous. I do want to test this at some point, but uh, maybe this is not the time. So, and of course we've got a recoverable first stage as well, and that's something else to test. But another thing I wanted to test was the Taurus, because we have to fix that up. It's not like we are lacking in recoverable first stages. Speaking of which, let's bring that up. So I decided to develop this system, which is completely different from everything else. Uh, you can see a unique design, to say the least. Uh, perhaps revolutionary, even. Uh, and we've got a lander can here. And we've got a nuclear rocket motor here, and it is surrounded by fuel. Fuel here, fuel here, and of course the little aerodynamic thingamajiggies uh, carrying the fuel here. But uh, the coup de grace, if you will, is the use of the Rocketmax 487Ss to give it emergency power so that, if necessary, it does have a thrust to weight ratio greater than 1. Uh, its total mass, by the way, is 35 tons. So uh, if you work out all the thrust of the engines with eight of these Rockmax 487Ss... Oh, uh, wait a minute. I'm short, aren't I? Uh, yeah, I'm short. Okay, well, uh, that's fine. We could slap more on if we need it, but uh, I don't think we do. So uh, we've got a thrust weight ratio of what? Uh, I think it's like 0.84. Uh, we, we'll just burn some fuel. We'll be fine. But, point is, it uh, can boost up its thrust to weight ratio. Unfortunately, we are over the part limit if we're going to use the Taurus B to launch it. We could dump some struts to fix that, maybe. But, uh, yeah, but at this payload mass, the natural launch will be the Taurus B. And we would be able to retest that and see if it works. 
Also, the fact that these fuel tanks extend past this decoupler means that we can extend struts directly from this fuel tank to that without cross uh, without actually attaching them to this decoupler. So that would be a beneficial thing. But of course, this is overboard for Gilly. I mean, this is like this is more like if you want to land on something like Tylo kind of thing. Uh, well, it still need a little well. Actually, it could probably land on Tylo. It just needs to burn a little bit of fuel, and then it'll start to have the thrust-weight ratio necessary to make a soft touchdown on Tylo. So yeah, uh, maybe it is a Tylo lander. It's not so much a, a lander for Gilly. But anyway, so this is the second thing I came up with. Even more expensive than the first. We see 282,000 funds now. Uh, but I've been wanting to retest the Taurus B. So this is something that's coming up, if you will. Um, yeah, uh, hopefully the fact that I uh, move these side pods out will mean the fairings on the LVN uh, will decouple properly. You know, we've had that problem before. So yeah, I gave some space to it specifically for that purpose. Alright, so that's that idea. So what I will do is use a bog standard lander like this. And the beauty of the bog standard lander like this is that even though the nuclear lander has like 7,700 delta V, this thing has 3,700, which is more than enough, I think you'll agree. And uh, we also have the, the very reliable launch system, the OVX. And so we can just rely on that to get this on. And it's cheaper than the other alternatives. It, I could make this way cheaper, but that would mean that the launcher might not be as reliably recoverable. So this is, and of course uh, the OVX could launch a much heavier payload than this. This is only 6 tons, the OVX is rated for 14 tons. So yeah, uh, it's overkill in terms of the launcher, but uh, we're going to bring it back anyway, so no worries. Okay, so let's do it this way. And let's do it quickly now because it's been a while since uh, I've started thinking about that Gilly mission. Time to get it over with. So Erden Kerman is our least experienced pilot, so he will be getting the mission. All right, so here we go. Ah, uh, well we we're we're just planning a flag. I didn't need to add any science to it, and we're definitely bringing Erden Kerman back. So not too much concern about about transmission. So uh, no antenna this time again. Uh, I've I have a tendency to forget antennas anyway. And yeah, we'll just bring him back. It's incentive to make sure that Erden is safe and sound, and we'll come back safely. Not that we need any extra incentive for that. Anyway, here we go. Uh, wait, uh, do we have lights on? I don't think I put lights on. I think we can make the landing just fine without lights. Okay, enough of this. Not exactly the most elegant rocket design I've ever done, but it is certainly functional. Okay, OVX running smooth so far. Erden Kerman apparently does not know the track record of this particular rocket, and so he seems afraid even though there is no cause for him to have any alarm whatsoever. Let me check that all the tanks... Oh no, the outside tanks are still not feeding properly, I think. I, I replaced the... Uh fuel lines. Okay, these did. It's just that uh, these didn't. Well, I think we might be able to get up there without those because it's light payload and all. I'll treat it as reserve fuel, perhaps. Or, uh, yeah, uh, I'll pump it in once we get into orbit. Or at least uh, bef as we coast to apoapsis. Okay, high g-forces in order to circularize here. But let's do it nice and quick so that Erling Kerman can be on his way. Let's see how it is.
Eh, alright. Well, 100 on average. Right, well, let's decouple the mission. Meriden Kerman is ready to go. Hope he'll be alright for electric charge. Uh, let's get the OVX down. Otherwise, we'll have significant fund loss. Okay, OVX deorbit burned. Shouldn't have done that. Let's see what it's actually at. Yeah, it's a little bit low. Also seemed to be over the wrong location. I didn't account properly for the rotation of the planet. Let's go to 31, just to be careful. And then I'll just, we've got plenty of fuel, thanks to the light payload. Oh, I said I'd have, uh, have our pilot plant a flag, I forgot about that. Keep forgetting about that. Some sort of mental block. Uh, we seem to be crossing the coast low, so we might be undershooting. Hmm, barely over the mountains. It's pretty bad for an OVX landing. I have the numbers down pretty well for this one. Been testing too many darn recoverable launchers. Gotta get back to basics with my better designs. Totally can't see the surface. We might run out of... Oh, wait, there it is. Oh, ah, uh, so it was like that, was it? So much for recovering the OVX, geez. Well, definitely didn't count on a slope like this. All the design work has clearly got me quite tired, otherwise, I don't think I. I, I'm surprised that I could possibly lose an OVX at this stage. But alright, anyway, let's get on with the mission. That's what I get for touting how perfectly reliable and wonderful it is, right? Okay, let's activate the engine like this. Why does this seem to be a... no, no, it's just a shadow. I thought it was some asymmetry between the four, but I think it's just the lighting. Okay. Okay, Eve periapsis of 7,000 kilometers on the initial burn seems okay. It's a little bit touchy because we're not doing an inclination change here. We're just taking advantage of the descending node being there. So, yep. Okay, let's see if this is enough time. Yeah, pretty close. Alright, so Erden Kerman has his Eve transfer starting. All charged up. Good deal. Alright, well I'll uh, come back to you once the burn is complete. Okay, just about done here. Let's see what's really going on. And that's not very good. Okay, so 12,000 kilometers. We'll do a mid-course plane change to get a little bit closer than that. All right, out to interplanetary space. Okay, uh, Eve periapsis, 85 kilometers, sounds good, with a 17 meter per second adjustment in 24 days. We're probably crashing into Eve now, which is fine for the moment. Let us continue into Eve SOI. Okay, so we need to rendezvous with Gilly, obviously. So, need to make sure that we have an inclination suited to that sort of thing. We're coming in a very bad angle. So, we can't really correct our inclination very, very well like this. Let's see, I've got 65 here. 
let's do this burn, but I'm gonna have to adjust the periapsis with regard to air braking calculator. Okay, air braking calculator says 65 kilometers. So, I think I have to go this way, is that right? Yeah. That might be overdoing it. And with Eve, you definitely don't want to overdo it. Let's go 66 and then we'll we'll uh, bring it down using thrust after that. Okay, so Erden Kerman, you are, are you, well, I'll just ask rather than tell you. Are you ready to enter Eve's atmosphere? Well, you look excited enough. Oddly, Erden Kerman seems to be enjoying the whole idea of re-entry, or error breaking at least. Oh, we're going back up. Let's see if we make orbit properly. Properly might be a strong word considering our inclination right now. Okay, how bad is it? Pretty darn bad. 24 and and the node is right here instead of in a nice far out location. Let's see how much it'll cost. Okay, well there we go. That's probably close to uh, too far away to retain it as we go along. It'll probably tell me I don't have that encounter at certain points on the approach. Well, that's a little bit better. 23 kilometers. Okay, well, 625 meters per second it is. I'm half tempted to have Erden land on Eve after Gilly and then just worry about rescuing him later, but that might be a very mean thing to do. And certainly out of character with our existing approach to Kerbal missions. All right, well, 50 kilometers will do. All right, let's get there. Okay, orbit will require 300 meters per second. 301, let's say. All right, well, nothing too surprising about that. After all, we have to adjust our orbit all the way from this ellipse to that broad orbit that Gilly has around Eve. So let's get rid of this. And yeah, let's just uh, head for descent directly. That'll do the trick. We'll land somewhere up there. Maybe we can make a better approach than that. There we go. All right, so a whole five meters per second. A sprinting pace. So right there is our spot. Do you suppose they put biomes on Gilly? Doesn't seem like there's much space, but we're about to find out. So after this landing, uh, we'll call an episode. Erden Kerman is going to have to hang out here around Gilly or Eve for for a little bit of time before we can transfer him back. And we'll do other things in the meantime. Try not to forget about him. We will not uh, we will not pull an Elliot on him. Place looks pretty steep, but this is Gilly. It's not going to topple us over the way. The OVX toppled on Kerbin, that's for sure. Okay. Can't really be sure we've landed properly. We get... Get stable here. Once I... Well, l let me take SAS off. Just to see what happens, because... 
once we get Erden out to plant the flag, we're not going to have SAS, of course. Okay. So, normal stuff. EVA. Huh. It didn't give me the... Oh, but, but uh, right, the uh, SAS was off. Alright, Gilly's Lowlands. So we do have biomes on Gilly. So let's keep that data aboard. And do the crew report. Okay, keep data. Alright, now EVA and head to the ground. Oh, come on, this Gilly, you should be flopping around. Yeah, that's more like it. <laughs> Who needs an EVA pack? Actually, you probably do, just so that we can get you down. Uh, down, down, down. There we go. All right. Take surface sample. Keep that at 162 once we get that back. Similar to an asteroid, no surprises there. Uh, EVA report from Gilly's Lowlands. You can barely move without flying away from the surface. You wish you brought an and anchor. You wish you had brought an anchor, I believe you mean to say. Okay, plant the flag. Alright. So, Erden Kerman. Erden. And uh, Gilly's Lowlands. Um, hmm, what can we say? Well, I can't think of anything clever, so I'm just going to keep it there for now. Best to be silent if you have nothing good to say. Okay, make sure the EVA pack is on. So, right, right, and grab, and board. Alright, didn't really need the ladder very much. Okay, now we'll get SAS on just to keep things stable. And Erden Kerman, let's get you back into orbit. I will feel a little bit better once you're in orbit rather than on the ground. So yes. Okay, uh, that's 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 more than enough. So Erden Kerman has successfully planted a flag on Gilly, and so yet another contract fulfilled. That leaves us with planting a flag on Drez building an ELU station, and of course, transmitting and recovering scientific data from the surface of Tylo. So we don't really need to plant a flag on Tylo just yet. We need to get the science mission done first, and that'll be a good test of any particular system we want to land on Tylo. And certainly testing a system would be better than trying to send a Kerbal with it on the, on the next try. We've already done one try. All right, that looks good. I think that'll clear any obstruction on Gilly. Still a weird sort of inclination, unfortunately, but I will take it for now. All right, so with that, Erden Kerman safely in orbit around Gilly, fulfilling his mission. We got Elliot to fulfill the mission at Ike. We lost an OVX uh, with the substantial funds involved there, but, uh, well, we've got a lot of other ideas uh, to try out in future episodes. So, lots going on. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.